Welcome back. It is so exciting to have once again, Professor Pete Weitzner, who is the adjunct professor at Chapman University and a longtime Orange County business journalist. Pete, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, Amy, Lauren, it's always, I love your show. It's so professional. So we should do it more than once a year and hopefully next year in the studio again. Oh, that I would be really fabulous. <laughs> I really hope so. It would, this has just been a tough year for everyone, but it's a, you know, a testament to the resilience of people and humanity that we found a way to make it all work. So Pete, thank you so much for being here. And you know how much I love your economic updates. <laughs> I just go crazy over it because I just think that the insights that you have, not only about, you know, the United States and California, but also specifically Orange County are so relevant. So I'm, I'm really excited to talk about you know, 2022. But before we do, how do you think we're doing right now? You know, it's interesting, uh, Amy, Lauren, if you took a snapshot right now, and maybe say, say you had you've been somewhere for the last couple of years, the snapshot is really good, right? The uh, uh, unemployment's a little over 4%. Uh, that's uh, historically, that's pretty good. Stock market's at a record level. If you're a homeowner, Congratulations. 40%, <laughs> I think, in the last two years and yes. probably doubled if you bought it um, five years ago here, any almost anywhere. But why is it doing so? well? And, and I should also mention, but at the same time, in the last few months, we have inflation, which we haven't had in a long time. Right. And you see it everywhere at the pump, at the grocery store, everything. Maple syrup is $20 now, for Christ's mm -hmm. sake, because it's a shortage of maple syrup. So, and why has, why have things done so well? Because we've thrown so much, $10 trillion at the economy, mostly COVID relief, um, but, but uh, also the Federal Reserve making money, so printing so much money. So that has consequences, which brings us to 2022. So right now things are well, there are some problems even right now, for instance, not everyone's returned to the workforce mm -hmm. and we have way more openings, four times as many openings than, uh, than are available people to take those 11 million job openings. 2022, well, we'll get to it, but it's going to be tough. It's not going to be as good as things. Well, are that is, that is a really great, great question because like, I've been thinking about inflation so much. It's, you know, I don't understand it that well. So is it the biggest problem or what do you think our biggest problems are coming down the pipeline? I don't think there's any question it's the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. And while some would make the case, the Federal Reserve has kind of tried to make the case, the chair, um, the White House, well, this is not a political economic discussion. Um, most economists that I know and the ones I trust the most, which would be the Chapman folks, Jim Doty, very respected forecasts, which they just released. They say inflation is just not transitory. It has never, what we have seen that has driven prices, we're at a little over 6% now, which we haven't seen that in so long. Uh, the Federal Reserve cannot control that. The only thing history tells us when we have inflation right now, which has a, a lot to do, there's, you know what, we know what's going on at the port. So, I mean, there's shortages of things that drives up prices. There's a lot of pent up demand that drives up prices. You can't just restart an economy, which many parts have had to after um, they're still living with the pandemic, all that easy money, um, all of that, History tells us the only thing that can beat down inflation, which isn't transitory, is a recession. So oh, it is coming, great. probably not in 2022, probably though in 2023, and inflation is the main reason. Oh my gosh. Well, that's not very good news, but um, it's to be expected, right? It is to be expected. Now, you know, 2022 uh, should be a, a, a decent year nationally. I mean, the economy is growing really well right now. But again, a lot of that has to do with we've thrown so much money at the, to keep people going. And and this made interest rates so low that has driven up the stock market. So the wealth effect is fantastic. The net worth of, of uh, Americans has gone from like, uh, in their homes, gone from like 11 trillion to 17. That makes people feel good and spend, although 
Christmas spending, holiday spending hasn't been as, as good as we'd like. But the economy should grow again at about 4%. California, a little better than that because we didn't do as well during COVID because we locked down more. Mm. The more stringent places have grew slower during COVID and are growing better now. But as we record this, I know, well, who knows with Omicron, but that's... Well, that is interesting. So like how did California and like specifically Orange County do compared with the United States? So worse in 20 for, through COVID, um, Orange County for uh, maybe for little separate reasons. And, and of course, Northern California, which has this own anomalous thing, which is called Silicon Valley, did fine. Of course, Silicon Valley did fine during COVID. Right. Uh, but Orange County uh, has also recovered. We're supposed to grow jobs by 4% next year. Uh, that's a really good thing. As I mentioned, we didn't do quite as well as the nation as a whole in 2021. We should do a little bit better. But there is a long-term problem for Orange County, and it's a trend we've seen for a while. And that is we're losing a very important part of the population. We're losing a very important part of our economy. We're a very diversified economy. By the way, one thing that really did hurt Orange County is as diversified as we are, maybe the biggest sector now is leisure and hospitality. Mm. Take, take Disneyland for as mm -hmm. a big mm -hmm. example. The biggest of those was closed. Mm -hmm. So that really hurt us. Now those jobs are coming back. If we can get people to take them, you know, people are re-enter the workforce, but we've also lost what's called innovation jobs. We're not creating as much innovation jobs, the big tech jobs, the robotics, you, you name it, all the cutting edge technology uh, jobs. We're still top 15, but we've gone from like 10th in the country to like 12 or 13 mm -hmm. places like Denver and Texas are zooming by us. Mm -hmm. You want those, those are the best paying jobs. And as we lose those jobs, we lose young people mm -hmm. who are the ones who create them and take them, 25 to 44. Mm -hmm. Not in massive numbers, but we probably lost 8 to 10% of our 25 to 44 population. Not to mention, these are peak spending years. Right. Buy homes, cars. So that's a long-term problem for Orange County. I mean, it's here now. How do you reverse that? It's... That's a yeah. Well, I remember when you oh. last year when you came in and spoke with us, you mentioned how affordable housing was really a problem for this young uh, group as well. And I'm sure that may contribute to that. Of course, it's one of the reasons we lose young people. It's still I mean, it's a great place to raise a family, mm -hmm. but I mean, you have to be able to afford the rent or to afford the home. The median price is now, I believe, over nine hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So the time honored, you divide that maybe by four, four and a half, you, uh, you got to make 150 to 200,000 and buy that home. That's not a high percentage. So the affordability index, as we call it, is, mm -hmm. is low. Uh, so yeah, um, and it's still probably twice, even a little more than where we're losing people to, Texas, Tennessee, Colorado, Arizona. Mm, so, I mean, wow. it's not like it's a massive exodus. It's still a wonderful place to live. And Orange County still has an incredible lifestyle index, which is the arts, which is education, mm -hmm. which is safety. We're still very low crime. But if this, there are things to watch problem. out for. Yeah, it, it is. So so last question for me and then, Lauren, I want you, your input as well. What can we do this year as residents in Orange County to help maybe defray some of this? So that's a really, so as far as economically, like a big one, one way to crystallize where the kind of, if you were, if you were at a point where you could buy a home now, should you buy it? Prices are so frothy. It's been such a run up, but mortgage rates are still very low. They're going to go up because with inflation going up eventually, so look, mortgage rates are still about 3%. Mm -hmm. They'll probably go up to about 4%. That's the prediction. Mm -hmm. Uh, Short-term rates will go up a day and then long-term rates will go up. Um, should you buy it? Well, you know, you're going to have to put up, you're not going to get 20, 25%, which we had last year. You might actually prices Chapman forecast a dip about three, 4%, but it still might be a decent time to buy. As far as 
you know, I think Orange County has always had also a little bit of a promotional uh, issue. And there's been fits and starts to form these groups to market us, uh, market us better, market us to those that age cohort, 25 mm -hmm. to 44 that we talked mm -hmm. about on those things. Hate to say it, especially in a time when so many people are worried legitimately about, for instance, public safety, crime. Mm -hmm. And we still have a, this wondrous, some of four of like the top 10 safest cities. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, you know, maybe that's still where we, uh, it hurts us that we don't have that one major city, that one mm -hmm. centralized place where, you know, some, some initiatives, uh, like going back to the 70s when New York had all its problems and I love New York kind of thing uh, mm -hmm. could happen. But uh, it's it's not as if the county is is falling apart. <laughs> no, but to listen to you, it might be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope I didn't do it. They called oh, the, the oh, fact that we it. own the happiest it's place on earth. earth doesn't seem to be working in our favor. <laughs> yeah, well, it's I mean, you know, I, I think COVID's got us all a little like right, a little hesitant to be enthralled mm -hmm. at, at at anything, right? And on the other hand, isn't it just, uh, yes, I understand the impacts of COVID and it's been dreadful and devastating. On the other hand, having moved from New York to Southern California when I did, it, there is a cyclical element to it. There, you know, when people get to choose where they want to live, Southern California is always in the top three. Mm -hmm. And Orange County is right there. People don't talk about it as Orange County necessarily. I don't know if that's a holdover from a TV show from a couple decades. The OC, <laughs> Misha Barton. Ever since yeah. Misha Barton got killed off on the show. <laughs> I think I stopped watching by that point. Didn't you yeah. know that? I didn't even know that. I <laughs> well, think her career did too. <laughs> well, exactly. I was going to say, where is Misha Barton now? We don't hear much from her. But I think a lot of this is just, it's so important for us to watch, Pete. So thanks for always bringing it to us. Sure. And, and I know that, um, you know, you bring it the way you see it, and then I'm going to spin it the way I want to see it. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it's actually been look. It's been a especially with a pandemic. It, it's economically speaking, it's been a not bad last year and a half. Well, we're on a ten year run yeah. as far as yeah. so we like you said, economy cyclical. Uh, but probably not till till 2023. There's only so much the Federal Reserve can do. So mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you, thank you so much for bringing it to us. We love having you. And yes, in response to your earlier request, we need to do this more than once a year, and certainly <laughs> now more than tw more than once every other year. <laughs> and yeah. just keep and, on and track. In the studio, you bet. Thank you, very much. Thank you. Thank you.